Good morning, Illini. Welcome back to Healthy Illini Podcast. I am your host, as always, Matt Schrock. And today we have something a little bit different for you. Uh, we talk about a lot of health and wellness topics. Uh, a lot of times it's internal, it's your, your physiology, it's, it's your routine, things like that. But part of health and wellness is where you live. And part of where you live is finding where you live. And so we're talking today about apartment hunting. And it, again, it's one that we haven't done, and I'm really excited to jump into it. Today, I'm joined by our guest, Dana DeCare. Uh, she's an assistant dean of students with Student Assistance Center and is also with the Off-Campus Community Living Office. Uh, Dana, thanks for being here with us. Thanks. I'm happy to be here. So uh, I, we, we talk a lot on this program about first experiences for college students because I've said it a number of times. I'll say it again. Uh, we have so many students on campus as their first venture into kind of doing their own thing, whether it be shopping for their own food, doing their own laundry, their schedules, you know, when they're up, when they're out, um, all these decisions they have to make for themselves. And and up until this point, they really probably haven't thought about a lot of them. They've kind of had these ideas. They really haven't thought in depth. And this is another one about, you know, where you live. That's a big idea. And, you know, uh, most students, they talk about, oh, my first apartment, my first apartment, my first apartment, you know, that that's a big thing. But... Um, oftentimes when they think of their first apartment, they think of maybe how it's going to be decorated or, you know, what kind of items they're going to take or who they're going to live with, things like that. But the idea of where you're going to live or how you're going to find where you live, that's not one we think about a whole lot until we're in it. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh my goodness, what am I doing? So let's start there. If somebody's listening in and they're trying to figure out, you know, they're, they're looking for a new place to live or, or for first place to live on their own or a new place they've been living, they're looking for somewhere else to go to. Um, what are some things to think about some things to plan when they're starting on that journey? Yeah, the first thing is really thinking about your budget. Um, rental prices have gone up in the last couple of years, and there's a lot of gentrification on campus town of high-rise luxury apartments that have Bluetooth shower heads and all these fancy things. Um, but it also is being affordable. So being able to afford um, increasing energy costs because those costs keep rising, um, you know, and utilities just in general. So thinking about how much you're able to afford and also like talking to your friends because there might be some friends where they may be able to afford more and you're not. And that makes a little bit more of an uncomfortable conversation. So kind of thinking about what you're able to afford, who you want to live with, and then also proximity to classes and campus. Or even if it's a little bit further out, is it close to a bus line where you can hop on a bus really easily? Because it is champagne and it gets cold and it gets windy and it's not fun walking. So making sure that you have some transportation to campus um, is really important. So these are a lot of big ideas and you're, you're right in all of them. And it it's and, it you know, I, I laugh because we're talking about college students, in their first apartment. But, you know, I'm 45 years old and looking, you know, when we look at housing markets like this, all these things come into play for the rest of your life when you're looking at where to where to live. Yeah, you know, the location, the budget, the utilities, you know, things like that. Um, and these are big questions that take time to figure out. And you're playing a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle. You know, if this is the cost for my utilities and this is where I live, how do they, you know, this place has a better utility cost, but it's farther away. This place is closer, but it costs more. These are all pieces you have to fit together. And that does take time. So what kind of timeline would you recommend? Like, when do you want to start thinking of these things? If you're looking to, you know, I want next year. I want to start getting an apartment um, next August, my next academic year. I want to move into an apartment with my friends. When's a good time to start looking at these things? If it were my way, it would be next like early spring semester. But unfortunately, a lot of the trend for looking for housing is right now, especially if you have like if you're looking for a four bedroom apartment with all your friends close to campus, those tend to get picked up quicker. And so there's more apartments than there are students. And there are still plenty of apartments available. We have a lot of grad students that get admitted in the late spring semester, and there are still a ton of apartments, like single apartments and things like that. But I would say if you're like a freshman or a sophomore, I would really encourage waiting just a little bit, maybe into November, to look for an apartment. Because I also, I want you to be able to find something that's close to campus and affordable. But I also want you to know your roommates. <laughs> and sometimes... If you're signing a lease with folks you just met, like in August, you don't necessarily know their temperament, how they clean, are they going to pay their rent? So I would encourage folks to sign a lease with folks that they really know um, because it is a legal document and it's binding and you can't get out of it. I want to come back to the lease, the lease idea in a minute because that's a yeah. very important conversation. But I want to backtrack just a bit. 
you were talking about, you know, people you really know, because that's so important. I, I you know, I, I talk to a lot of students and I say, you know, when you first meet people, it's just like any relationship. There's a honeymoon period and everything's great. Everything's fun. You've got, you got uh, similarities, you got personality similarities, but you haven't gotten in, gotten into the nitty gritty of cold weather, of stress of the semester, um, of when things don't go quite go right, you know, new relationships that they're going to have with other people. Because the first people you meet the first week are people you live with kind of around, but then you have classes. And if you don't have the same classes and you kind of drift to other people, and that's not bad, but there's a lot of dynamics there. So you're right. Um, there's things like uh, a lot of things there to consider when you're looking at, at roommates and things like that as well. But let's talk a minute about the idea of this binding contract, because up until now, for a lot of students, they've not had something where there's no real recourse. You know, there's extra credit on assignments. There's you're working a, a part time job and there's people that you can call and fill in for you. You're covered by your parents insurance. You're covered by your, your parents home, things like that. So what are some important things to understand about what a lease is and what that means? Yeah, a lease is a legally binding contract, and you can't get out of it, like, ever. Well, there's, like, certain things you can, but they're, like, not good things. Um, So leases are really hard to break, which is why people will sometimes sublease. But I will say it is really, really important that to look over the lease before you sign it. Because even if something's incorrect, let's say they made a mistake and your monthly rent is 1000 and there's always um, a total rent for the whole year. So it's say like 12000 Let's say they accidentally put 14000 Well, you still have to pay that 14000 because it was in the lease and you signed it. So what we do in our office is we provide lease reviews where I personally go over every lease with each student for about an hour and talk about if there's anything predatory in that lease, if there's anything that should be changed, such as um, most leases in Champaign Say that a landlord can come in your apartment whenever they want with no notice. In Urbana, there are there's a tenant ordinance that says that landlords have to give you 24 hours notice if they're going to bring someone in their apartment or fix something or a maintenance request. In Champaign, they don't have to do that. And a lot of the rental properties have properties in both Champaign and Urbana, and they do it for Urbana but won't do it for Champaign. So that's one of the things I, I switch. Um, another thing I always look at in the lease is making sure it lists the exact apartment number. There's a new trend in Champaign with apartments where landlords sometimes aren't letting students know what apartment they're going to have until like two weeks before they move in. And I would really caution against that because you should, when you're looking for an apartment, you should look at the exact apartment you're going to stay in because you wouldn't buy a car without test driving it and you need to see the exact apartment. And also, the landlords that you're going to be paying, they're business owners, and they should want informed consumers that know exactly what they're signing up for. Because once you sign that lease, even if it's really, really a bad apartment that you they said you couldn't see, if you sign that lease, you can't get out of it. An important distinction here. You work for the Office of Off-Campus Community Living. Yeah. And you will help, and you will assist, but you have no authority no. Over those. It's like if I were to call for your Verizon bill, I can't do that um, because it's a private lease between you and a business owner. So like when it's university housing, we could talk to you about folks. And I and to be fair, I used to work for university housing and I always really encourage freshmen to live on a second year because I think it's a really positive experience. And I think our staff in the halls do a really great job. But if folks do want to move off, which I do hear sometimes, sometimes folks want to move off because they want that freedom. They want to just jump into it, and they're so excited. Sometimes it's for cost, and I understand that too. But with the rising costs of apartments, I'm not sure if it's a better deal. Because going back to budgeting, because I'm going to jump around, it's also thinking about, like, food. Like, I don't know about you, but I will go to the grocery store, buy a car full of groceries for my family of four, and then still go pick up Chipotle on the way home. So it's really being realistic about um, how much are you going to cook, and how much are you going to eat out? Because that is a big part of budgeting. And also grocery prices go up too. So thinking about what realistically you're going to do, whereas when you're in the halls, you have a meal plan and you can just go to eat. Go grab it whenever. whenever. And not to cook. When, when a student is looking at a lease and they're, or they're talking to you about the lease, what if, you know, I mean, because when you're trying to sell somebody something, you, you make some promises. Um, you say, oh, this is what it is. That may or may not be the case. Um, how, how, if I'm a student looking at my management, my landlord or potential landlord is talking about things that will be in the apartment, how do I approach that uh, as far as, you know, the promises that are made? 
Yeah. And there are a lot of promises that are made verbally, either while on a tour or discussing the lease. It's really important that it's a, that any promises they give you are written in the lease. So if they say, oh, yeah, 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 you can live with all your roommates. You're going to have them in there. No problem. It's a single lease. But don't worry, you'll be living with your friends. Nope. Make sure it's written in the lease that they're living with X, Y, Z. Right. Um, and if it's not written there, sometimes there's turnover in positions and they might say, oh, yeah, that person doesn't work here anymore. I don't know what they said to you, but that's not what we're going to do. You know, we talked about the importance to understand that a lease is a is a legal document. If you sign it, you are held to it. But it goes both ways. That um, you can you don't have to be scared of the lease, um, just be aware of what's in it. But you can also understand that that brings a level of security and comfort to you if you have something written in the lease and it's been signed. Then you say, look, this is what was promised. And so you know, understand that it works both ways. Um, that is a legal document. It's a, it's a it's an important weighty thing for you as a consumer, but it's also an important weighty thing for the per, for the person providing that service. And uh, you can hold them to that standard as well. Yeah, absolutely. You, you mentioned a little bit about about landlords and rental properties and things like that. That's one thing that is really hard. I and mean, I see students talk about it all the time is, is this a good place? Is this a, uh, is this a place I want to be? And so not, I'm not asking you to, to say specifically, oh, this one's good, this one's bad. We're not going there. But how do you find out? Like, oh, yeah. what's the method to try and search and say, you know, how do you find reliable information? Because if I call up a management company and say, are you good? Yeah, they're going to say they're good. You know, if I call up somebody who had, who just moved out, I don't know what they're going to say necessarily, you know, how do I find reliable information on what's a good, a uh, good, uh, if I'm looking at an apartment, is this a good place to be? Um, I tell every student that has a negative or positive situation with their landlord to post it on Reddit, UIUC, or if they have a complaint, Google reviews or file a complaint with the Better Business Bureau. So I feel like the subreddit for UIUC for our campus is a really good pulse on campus. So I would encourage you to look there, talk to your peers. But then also when you're working with a landlord before you sign that lease, so setting up apartment viewings, asking questions, that's the time when they should be at their best customer service. And if you feel like they're not getting back to you or you feel like they're not giving good information or they're not willing to work on maybe a change to the lease, I will say that's a pretty good indicator of maybe how they will treat you when you're a tenant. The landlords are there to make sure that you have housing. So they need to provide housing that's that's safe, that has locking doors, has working water and energy and all those things. But let's say your couch is ripped. That could take up to a couple of months to get fixed. Or if there are other things that aren't life safety, it could take a hot minute to get them get those things addressed. And you might have to go to their office, give them phone calls, send them emails in order to get that done. And I'm saying that based off of students' experience that I've heard when they come to my office. And the caveat to that is I will say, I only really hear the worst. Like, no one comes into my office and is like, oh my gosh, I love my apartment and paying rent is a dream. It's really more of like the worst stories and what can I do? What are my rights? Um, and me letting them know what their what the next course of action will be for them. Because you're right. I mean, we, we don't, it's kind of like, I don't talk about how great my washer and dryer are but if it breaks I'm, you're going to hear exactly. how, how not great it's going right now because that's an inconvenience and it's an annoyance it's kind of the same way with everything in, in our in our lives um the same thing with those uh with apartments and, and things like that and 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 you know i, I again want to stress that just because it's on campus doesn't mean that the campus because students come with this idea that if it's on campus uiuc has authority over everything if it's on our campus we should be in charge of it that's not how it works if it's yeah. not part of the system if it's not an actual UIUC office unit, whatever, yeah, we don't because there's live. I mean, Green Street is technically on campus, but all of those restaurants are not UIUC restaurants. So the same thing with living on campus with housing, and it can get confusing because you do have dorms and you have university housing, and then you have you know apartments and campus housing and things like that, and so it does get confusing. So one of the best things students can do is ask questions ask questions of the rental management of the landlord, things like that, but also ask questions of you with off-campus community living. But how do they do that? So I, I want to take a moment and kind of talk about, you know, how do they find you? Um, what resources do you have? Websites, things like that, that students can reach out if they have these questions. How do they get in contact with you? Yeah, we have several different ways. We have our website, which is occl.illinois.edu, and that has all of our information. And also we have done webinars and things like that and those are listed under our resources. And all of those are done with a collaboration with Student Legal Services, uh, which is also a part of the Dean of Students Office. So they're our friends. Um, 
And a lot of what our website is is so that students can find the information whenever they need it. So it's really like it's a pretty dense website, but there's a search bar. Um, so if you need help with like looking for a sublease information and how to do that safely, things like that, that's all on there. Um, another way is we have walk-in hours every Tuesday and Wednesday from 1 to 4 over in Turner Student Services, which is on the corner of 6th and John. So it's next to the Target. Um, so you can come there as well and you can just walk in or call in. That's totally fine. Um, we also have our OCCL office number, which is uh, 217-333-0112. And that line is answered by all my student employees that also work for off-campus community living. And they're able to schedule appointments on my behalf as well. So we'll have all that information and those uh, the number and the website in our bio. Yeah. And so it, that way... We always put that in there so that if somebody's listening, they don't have to like try and write it down real quick oh and find it. But I, but yeah. we, we want to highlight, we want to mention it. So yeah. you know, I know, I'm an auditory learner. I am. Yeah. Um, so that helps me whenever I hear it. But we'll have those that information in the bio there. And again, this is a, a good place to start because it's hard to go into this conversation and say this is how you should approach it or these are the things you're looking for because everybody's preferences are different. Mm-hmm. Everybody's resources, budget, you know. Do you have accommodations you need? You know, what are your must haves? You know, like um, for me, I don't care if it has a fancy shower head, but I want to make sure that it has AC and everybody's is slightly different. And so uh, if you're listening and you're not sure, reach out to OCCL because that is the way to get your particular guidance is individually. And just like I say, with every unit on campus, we're here because we care about students. We enjoy interacting with students. If you don't enjoy interacting with students, you're not gonna make it long on this campus. And so if you're here and and you're working with this, we want to help. We want to be a part of it to help guide as best we can and, and going in on that. But again, that's the off-campus community living. Dana, thank you so much for taking time today and talking to us about this. I, I've really enjoyed having you here. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. There are so many new experiences when you come to campus, and we've talked about a, a bunch of them in this program. But another one is figuring out where you want to live, whether you are starting in a dorm and now thinking you want to go to an apartment or you're transferring in and you're looking for a place to live, there's a lot of things to consider and a lot of nuances that go into finding where you're going to live, whether it be budget, location, um, amenities, things like that. And it's important to have these conversations, to have these conversations with your roommates, to have these conversations with the potential landlords and uh, rental management. Um, and a good place to have this conversation is with the Office of Off-Campus Community Living. So I hope you reach out. If you have these questions, hope you reach out, follow up the resources that are in the bio. You can also reach out to us here at Healthy Illini at McKinley. We, we won't have some answers for you, but we'll find the people that do. And we're always happy to have those interactions. If you have questions about this topic or anything on the program, please feel free to reach out and ask us here. We'd love to connect with you and talk to you about whatever you're, you're facing on your journey. But thank you for joining us today because you are on a personal journey, no matter where you are in it. You are important and you matter. Your health and wellness are important and matter. And we're here to keep you well to excel. So go have a great week, Illini. Let us know how you're doing and we'll catch you next time on Healthy Illini.